Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining in today. And in this video, this is part two of a two part series on the internet of things, all the fun little gadgets and gizmos that I have uh, working here in the solar shed. And so I hope that this video is enjoyable to you, but I'm gonna ask that you hang with me because we're gonna go over a lot of really cool stuff today. Some of it may get a little bit involved, some of it may get a little bit technical, but at the end of the day, it's fun things to play with. Now, while they are fun, there's a lot of practicality as well that goes along with the stuff that I'm going to show you today. So as they work for me here in my project in my solar shed, hopefully they'll work for you as well. If you haven't seen part one, I'm going to link to it right up here and you're going to want to watch that video as well because this is all going to tie in together. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Welcome to the channel where we talk about solar power, web technology and life stories. If these are interesting topics to you, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when we have new videos. So again, thanks for joining us and we hope that you enjoy the video. So the first device that I want to show you today is this wireless Rio Link outdoor cam. Now when I say wireless, it just sends the signal wirelessly through an internet connection, like through a, a Wi-Fi router. Um, but it, it is powered by the cable here, but this is an outdoor camera. It is weatherproof um, Rainproof and dust proof. I've had it outside in the Phoenix weather for over a year There have been times when it's gotten 120 degrees and this thing works fantastic It also has night vision and so I have it mounted to the pole that uh, also has my weather station on it which is featured in the first part of this series on the Internet of Things but this is super, super impressive. I'll show you some video shots and a screenshot of it here in just a minute. But, and the link will be in the description below to this camera, but this is a very, very good product. And I'm very, very impressed with Rio Link and what they've been able to offer at the price point in which they're able to offer it. So super, super cool stuff. So the next camera that I want to show you is another Rio Link that I have actually mounted inside of the shed for security purposes. Now I can hook this camera into their cloud services uh, to store any video or any motion that's detected. I can also get notified if there's any video or motion that gets detected here inside of the shed, either with a text message or a push alert from the app. And I can go in and then look at the video that's online with that surveillance. Now this is wireless, so it is um, connected to the wireless internet router that I have. And then that wire that you see back here, that goes outside to the solar panel that I'll show you here in just a moment. Because this camera is completely self-sustaining all via solar. I'm not plugged into anything. It's not plugged into the charge controller. It's not plugged into an outlet. It's completely self-sufficient and you'll see that in a minute. But again, it is um, front facing the door of the shed. So any activity is monitored. And so it is tied into the wireless router that I have here. You'll want to check out. There's a video specifically on that as well as in part one of the internet of things. And so, yeah, there's that camera. Super, super impressed with real link and the products that they offer at the price point they're offering. As mentioned, the camera that's inside the shed is powered by its own solar panel. Now I have this mounted to the roof. Uh, there's the other camera that we saw moments ago in the weather station and the, the solar panels. But we come over here and that camera that's featured inside the shed has its own solar panel. And I have never ever had to plug that camera in and I've had it for a year and it is completely self-sufficient, self-sustaining. So a great option for any off-grid project. So yeah, there's the solar panel for that camera that we saw inside. Um, really, really impressed with Rio Link again and their price points and what they're able to offer. Okay, let's go into my folder here that I have set for Shed and we're gonna click on Rio Link. And I'm gonna show you the devices that I have connected to my cellular router here that was featured in part one. And let's go ahead and look at this one here. This is the camera that we just looked at here inside the Shed. So as you can see, I'm actually videotaping myself right now, and this is all done over the wireless internet. And you can see up here in the corner, it's streaming at almost two megs per second. And so very, very cool. I can swipe over and I can look at the camera that's outside that we just uh, featured in the video moments ago. 
And so, yeah, it's it's really, really impressive some of the things that Reolink is, is doing. And their cameras are really, really inexpensive for what you get. And so I would highly recommend checking them out for any off-grid video uh, surveillance, any wireless video that you need. Um, go ahead and check them out. Uh, you'll be glad that you did. So the next device that I want to show you is this smart plug by TP-Link, or also known as CASA, K-A-S-A. And if you'll notice down here, I have plug one and plug two. Right now I'm only utilizing plug one. And if you come up here, you'll notice that there is a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, this states that this plug is actually connected to the internet. Now I can turn this side on, which, which turns on a fan, and I'll show you why I'm using that here in a moment. And I can also turn this side on, but I don't have anything connected to that. So let's follow this line down over here, and as it comes down, it actually links to this fan, which I have blowing into the inverter. Now, the reason why this is so cool is I can use the temperature that I have being recorded through my ambient weather station. As you can see right here, the indoor temperature is 67 degrees and the outside temperature is 90. But when this indoor temperature reaches a certain degree as measured by the ambient weather station, through a technology called If This Then That, then I can tell this smart switch to turn on this fan. And so I'm actually going to demonstrate that for you guys now so that you can see these things working together in conjunction as the Internet of Things are supposed to do, making our lives easier, our, our homes smarter, <laughs> our solar sheds smarter. So let's watch that and see how this works now. Okay, let's go ahead and click on the shed folder again and let's go into IFTTT. So what I want to show you here is a feature that I've got set up with the CASA fan. And if we look at the settings here, what I've got is if the indoor temperature falls below 72 degrees, then turn off the fan. I don't need to have the fan on if it gets below that, right? But on the same token, if I come over here, if indoor temperature rises above 78, then turn on the fan that we have in the left socket for that. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and edit this and let's take the temperature and let's make it a value of, let's make it 72 and I'm going to let it heat up a little bit in here in the shed the camera on, and I'm going to put the camera on this and let's see when the temperature gets to 72 degrees that it's going to turn on that fan. So let's watch that now. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this out as we look at the fan. The indoor temperature is at 70 degrees and I've increased it to turn on that fan when it gets to 72 degrees. We just saw that in the screen. So let's go ahead and wait for this to get up to 72 degrees and let's see what happens here with the fan. So I opened the door to let the room get a little bit warmer quicker. So we're at about 71.5 degrees and let's see what happens here. Well, the fan just kicked on. So let's, yes, the fan just kicked on. So as we can see, now it took a little bit of time, it's actually 73 degrees in the room, but that's just because we're delayed over the internet. The fan did kick on when it needed to. Here is another smart plug that we have by TP-Link, which is uh, programmed and run through the CASA app. Now here you can see that we have this connected to the internet with a power on and a power off switch. Now I have that going directly to this light that is above um, my workbench. Now that light, I don't actually have um, tied into solar. I just have it plugged into, into the grid here. But this is actually connected to the Wi-Fi device that we have here in the, in the shed. And so I can remotely turn this light on and off from anywhere in the world. And I'll show you that screen here in a second. But it's nice when I want to come out to the shed and it's night outside. Um, I just come in uh, and turn the light on from the house before I even get out here into the shed and the lights turned on for me remotely. So yeah, so that's a, a really fun device and uh, let's take a look at the screenshots for that and see how it works.
Okay, let's go back into my shed folder and let's go ahead and click on the CASA link there. And as you can see, we have left. And I just turned the fan on, you may have heard it. Let's turn the fan off. Click that on. And I don't have anything connected to the right side of the plug, but if I did, I could control that turning it on and off. And then this one here in the middle, that's the smart plug for the light. So I can go ahead and click this on. And now the light just turned off. Click it. And now the light turned on. So no matter where I'm at in the world, I can turn the fan on, I can turn a light on, or I can turn anything on in that right plug if I want. So super, super impressive. Check them out, uh, CASA or TP link. I'll have links in the further and descriptions below for these devices as well. So every solar shed needs its own mini entertainment center. I have the Apple TV hooked into a small computer monitor so that I can come in here and watch some movie or stream some music while I'm working. This is all hooked to this Bose, which is via Bluetooth. And these are all powered by the solar system. And so everything in here as much as possible and to the integrity of the channel is powered by solar. And so all of the internet that I'm getting from this, whether I'm watching Hulu or Amazon video or Netflix or streaming music is all coming in over the wireless internet that I have here with the cellular router, which is tied directly into the solar system. So a lot of fun there. And lastly, I want to talk about the air conditioner that I have here in the shed. I'm not going to spend too much time because I actually have a video completely devoted to this, but I just want to show you this because it's very important as a part of the internet of things. As you can see here, I can connect it to Wi-Fi, and once it's connected to the internet, when it's powered on, I can control all of these aspects, temperature down, temperature up, fan, eco mode, um, whether I do a timer, sleep mode, um, all of those kinds of things, which are very, very nice for me to be able to manage and monitor the air conditioner here. Again, this is actually run completely off of the solar. Now I have it turned off right now because it is quite loud for the video, but everything that is controlled, uh, that I can control this with is coming in over here from the internet uh, that we have connected to the solar system. So yeah, very, very crucial and very, very powerful part of the internet of things here in the solar shed is this Toshiba air conditioner. So check out that video. But yeah, I have to mention this because it's certainly a very powerful internet of thing device here in the shed. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. A lot of practical uses here for the internet of things as it relates to off-grid living or off-grid hobbies or RVs, solar sheds, whatever. I just have so much fun doing this and I love sharing it all with you. Please tell me what you are using the internet of things to do and the projects that you are working on and how much fun those are. Share your videos online, link to them, comment below and just let us know what's going on. And so, yeah, thanks for joining us today. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.